there's no one like you there's none like you into the darkness you shine
strong God. You're a 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 strong God. God bless you, Kingdom family. I am so glad that you are streaming with us live on this morning. God is definitely in the blessing business. Listen, we've got a whole lot of things that are going on in our world today. And I know a lot of us are filled with anxiety, with stress and worry and concern. Um, and all of those things are to really be justified. We can justify all of those emotions. Uh, but the truth of the matter, the fact of the matter is always this, always, never, 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 never forget this. God is on our side. That's right. God is on our side. And I'm so excited about it. I'm excited about what God is up to in this season. And I really believe that as we continue to move forward in the things of God, that we're going to experience uh, some measures, some dimensions of God that we've never experienced before. I believe that where we are in this season that we are to experience the love of God, the power of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, and reflect the glory of God in dimensions that we've never done before. And so I'm praying with you. I pray that your uh, love, I pray that you've been loving on others and reaching out to others and making sure that nothing is stopping your love for others, even as we are in this season. I'm praying for you, praying for your family, praying for, praying for our world praying for all of the things that have been happening uh, in this place that we're in. We have, if you have not already, we've already experienced some loss of loved ones, some, uh, some things that have just taken us by storm, but we will not let our faith go. We will not let our faith go. Say with me, type it, whatever you have to do. I will not allow my faith to go. This morning, I want to just take a moment, and I want to preach to us. I want, there's a message that the Lord has given me and has laid on my heart to deliver to you the people of God. And um, I wanted to make sure that all of us are in this place. This morning, I'm going to give a subject, which you know is not one of the things I taught, uh, or talk about doing that much of. But this morning, as a subject to channel our vector of thought, I want to talk to us from the subject, love has this. Come on, say it again. Love has this. Love has this. Let's start our reading, if you would, out of 1 John. We'll go to 1 John, and in 1 John, we're going to go to chapter 4. When we begin to verse 4, we're going to, or chapter 4, verse 7, it says this. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that uh, loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, live through him, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God is love, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby we know that we dwell in him, and he is in us, because he hath given us his spirit. Beloved, I want us to, this morning as we, we, we begin to go through some thoughts, I want us to consider some things real quick. And first thing I'd like for us to consider is the reality of our fears. See, we're not in a place, not in a season, not in a dispensation where we need to act as if we are uh, moving or operating with blinders. Our reality is our reality. And if we begin to act like or pretend like uh, we have blinders on and it's just not happening to us, you will find yourself deceived. But the truth of the matter is, is that all of us are living through this critical time. It's a, it's a crucial time. It's a time that many of us have not seen. A pandemic has not hit the world for almost 100 years. So, so we're in a season and a time that we, most of us, have not lived through before. 
But though we've never been here, it does not mean that God has not given us what we need to navigate the place where we are. And I really believe with all of my heart that as since we have reached this place, that everything that happened prior to this place are things that God has given us to be able to manage and navigate where we are. These may be uncharted waters, but you've got a compass. These may be uncharted waters, but you have what you need. You've been dialed into God for a while. Good God Almighty. And I wish somebody, if you would just right now, just go ahead, just testify to somebody. I've been dialed in for a while. I've known God for a season now. I've, I've, I know how to pray. I know how to fast. I know how to seek his face. And I'm not doing this for anything, but these things have taught me how to navigate these uncharted waters. No, I've never seen these waters before, but one thing I do know how to navigate is how to navigate the love of God in my life. Okay, so as we go through these, these things, I, I, I want us to, to just consider, consider the reality of where we are, that some of the things that may be happening in this reality is you may be waking up with some anxieties and some worries and some fears and some troubles that maybe you have not had before. You've got some experiences that are, are unfamiliar to you. Uh, I know, I know I have, I have, I, I, I woke up one morning, I wake up every morning, I wake up every morning, I wake up and I normally just, because uh, I have horrible allergies, I've told some of you this and I have bad sinuses as well, and so normally when I wake up in the morning, I wake up, especially during this time of the year when all of the stuff is coming off the trees, pollen and all this other stuff, wind was blowing hard, and, and so when all of that is happening, because I normally wake up in the morning, I have to give a nice cough, well, <laughs> Let me tell you, coughing is not what you want to do right now in this season. And so I, here I am where I wake up in the morning and I cough, <laughs> and all of a sudden, right after I cough, I think, oh, my goodness, what is that? What could that be? And, I, and then it begins to set in my mind, oh, boy, this could be that. And then you wonder, should I go get myself tested? Should I hang around my children? Should I kiss my wife? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I go outside of the house? What should I do? Because I coughed, I coughed, I coughed. And then, then you get to the place where, where then even some of us, what happens is then if we do end up in a place where we do end up with COVID-19, then we say to ourselves, oh, my God, I've got it. And who's died and who hasn't? Or, or God forbid, if you ever end up exercising in your house while you're in your house saying, I got to make sure I stay in shape and you're exercising and you get out of breath and now all of a sudden you forget that the reason you're out of breath is because you've done more than you've ever done before <laughs> trying to lose what you've more than you ever lost before but in the middle of that you, you, it begins to birth an anxiety that says that this might be something traumatic and I wanted to, I wanted to tell you that that fear or that anxiety or or that mindset is something that's normal but what we got to be careful of is we got to be careful that what's causing our mindset is not please hear this get this is not the spirit of fear ah uh, I say it again is not the spirit of fear see because the truth of the matter is is that we must understand and recognize that there is a spirit of fear that has been placed on the release there's a spirit of fear that has been put in the world today and we got to make sure that we're not exercising and moving based off or thinking and activating our lives based off of the activity of that spirit of fear. And I say very intentionally the spirit of fear because fear has a spirit that is operating with it. All right, let's let's let me let me do this. It says as we go through this this book in in John my grandmother would call it I, John. My great-grandmother would call it I, John. As we go in I, John, or First John, the fourth chapter, it says in, in verse, I'm going to do verse 17. First, it says, verse 17, it says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Boldness in the day of judgment. Why do you say boldness in the day of judgment? I say boldness in the day of judgment because love is going to help you be bold when judgment happens. And whether we know it or not, whether we confess it or not, is that we're in the middle of a judgment place. Where in judgment there means the word separation. It means that there is a distinction between you and another. And so since in the day of judgment, we're in a day of judgment as they begin to test some and see who has and who doesn't. Most of you, if you have to go this way, if you don't have, then operate this way. We are in a day and in a place of judgment. And the Bible says that in a place of judgment, you need to have love operating in your life. 
Good God Almighty, you need to have love that is resting on your shoulders, love that's ruling your heart. And see, what happens is that if we're not careful, the spirit of fear begins to cause us to operate differently. I, got, I have something I want to read to you real quick. And this, is, this came from some, some just light research that I did, nothing deep. It says, fear can impair the formation of long-term memory and cause damage to certain parts of the brain. Uh, such as the hippocampus. This can make it even difficult to regulate fear. It can leave a person anxious uh, most of the time. To someone in chronic fear, the world will begin to look scary and their memories will confirm it. See, the way the spirit of fear operates is the spirit of fear gets into your mind and changes in impacts, and let's use the word that you get in Scripture, will transform your very thinking. And see, normally when we think about transformational thinking is we're normally looking for what is going to impact my transformational thinking is the Spirit of God, is the Holy Spirit in my life that will cause me to think and see and operate in a particular way. But I need us to understand that in this season, we must contend for the faith and make sure that this Holy Spirit is what's resting in our lives so that we can continue to walk in love, hallelujah, and not walk in the spirit of fear because the spirit of fear is trying to shape your mind so that we can be or shape our minds so that we will be paralyzed by the things that show up now all of a sudden when you do cough you're worried now all of a sudden if you become short of breath you anxiety comes upon you what is all of this happening is because the spirit of fear is beginning to operate and shape my mind into something God has not intended but uh, how do I get rid of this, Bishop G? Bishop G, it sounds good. Bishop G, thank you so much. Uh, great little lesson right there. But what can I do with this spirit of fear? Uh, the Bible says as we continue to read in, in 1 John or I, John, it says that in verse 18, let's do verse 18. Uh, well, I didn't even finish reading verse 17, so let's finish 17 to get into 18. The last part of verse 17 says, because as he is, wow, you can't skip that. Because as he is, so are we in this world. See, because if I need to have God's love in me and boldness so that I can be who he is in this world. And we know that there's somebody that's been looking for God. With all of the things that have been going on in our world, people are looking for God. And how and where will they find God? And I need to tell you, they're going to find God in you. Good God Almighty. Oh, God. Oh, somebody just come on, preach with me for a second and declare they're going to find God in me. That's where they're going to find God. They're going to find God in my testimony. They're going to find God in my victory. They're going to find God in my trial. They're going to find God in the midst of my heartache. They're going to find God as I don't become anxious. They're going to find God as the Spirit of God lives through me. And as I walk this thing out, I won't allow this thing to cause me to trip. How about this thing is going to cause me to live and not just any old life, but I got to live a life more abundant. Let's, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. I get excited. It's, it's almost embarrassing how I can get excited. And ain't none of y'all here. You watching me on the screen, and I'm excited. Huh. Verse 18 says this. It says, there is no fear in love. Hmm. There is no fear in love. Why is this important? This is important because many of us believe uh, that the opposite of fear is actually faith. And I would contend for us that the opposite of fear is not your faith, but the opposite of fear is actually love. Some of us think that the opposite of love is actually hate, but I would tell you that the opposite of love is not hate, good God Almighty, but the opposite of love is actually fear. 
Huh? Why would you say that, Bishop G? I say, you see, because even when we look at this world today, we, we looked at so many things that were going on. We look at the, the hate speech. We look at all of the things that have happened within the last five to six years. And we look at this and we say, what is going on? And, and you say, man, there's so much hate speech going on. People against each other, red versus blue, all these other things. And, and why is all of this happening? And, and I'm here to let you know that it's not a thing. Uh, we don't get rid of hate, hallelujah, by, by just saying, here, uh, do this instead of that. The way you get rid of hate is you understand that hate is the grandson or the son of fear. That fear is the actual incubator for hate. So if you want to get rid of hate, the first thing you got to do is get rid of fear. And if you want to get rid of fear, you must introduce love. For the Bible says in verse 18, it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love Cast out fear. Because fear hath torment. Hmm. He that feareth is not made perfect or mature in love. And so, so the Lord would have us to understand and know this morning that as we go through all that we're going through, that the believer's assignment is not to allow the spirit of fear to operate but to allow love to take place. And not just any old love, but the God type of love. God's love. And understand that the Bible goes and it says, and as we went through 1 John, it said that God first loved us so that we could actually love him. So I'm not doing this through my own strength. I'm doing a God release. Good God Almighty. I'm doing a God love. I'm releasing who God says I am. I'm releasing what God says. I'm releasing what God declared. And as I release that type of love, then that love then combats and causes fear to cease. It must cease and desist. So how do you stop fear? How do you stop hate? First, you don't fight hate because hate is that base, is fear's baby. So you stop fear. Uh, Bishop G, man, you done lost your mind. Mm, probably, I've been in the house. But, <laughs> but listen, as we go through this particular time and the season of our life, it is critical for us as believers to walk in the love of God to exercise in the love of God, to make sure that if they see anything happening in our lives, what they can say is there's love that's right there. And if they see love, love will begin to eradicate fear from someone else. It's amazing. You can go, and I know you might, you might go to your neighbor's house, but you wave from them way over there. You'd be like, no, I'm not even doing six feet. I'm doing 10, you know. And, and you look at your neighbor and you wave at them, and as you begin to do all of this, when they experience your love, watch their fear begin to cease. Good God. But not just cease, y'all. Good God Almighty. But the Bible says it cast it out, which means that there's an eviction letter. There's an eviction letter for fear. You need to take fear stuff and put it on a curve. Take fear stuff and let it know that you, you got to go out of here now because you have been building a mindset in the people that has caused us to become anxious. And in this season, it's vital for the believer to not live under the oppression of the spirit of fear, but instead live in the freedom of the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And as you live under the spirit of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will begin to transform our mind. How, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Not the spirit of fear likes to change that and cause you, you to get into a headlock. I see a headlock almost virtually within your mind where you don't know what to do, how to do. And, and as numbers rise and as you see the curb going up and as you see numbers that's in the hundreds of thousands, you just get worried and anxious. But let the Holy Spirit rule you. Your heart and your mind. Let the Holy Spirit do it. As the Holy Spirit rules our hearts and our minds, we'll be able to navigate this day. And not just navigate the day, but we will be able to help someone else walk in a new measure of freedom. Huh. One thing we don't want to do is, it's nothing like fear people, fearful people sitting with 
fearful people. Nothing like a bunch of afraid people hanging around each other, looking at each other, and they wondering, well, what you going to do? I don't know. What you going to do? And I hear the Lord saying, no, in this season, there must be a resources, a resource of believers. There must be some people who believe God, trust God, are depending on God, and say, you know what? I know what I'm going to do in this season. I'm going to trust God. I know the numbers are going up. I know there's a lot of anxiety that's happening in the world. But in this season, I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to lead me. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to guide me. And as the Holy Spirit becomes my strength and leads me and guide me, I decide that now I got to be the voice because I won't let his voice be dormant in my circles. Won't let his voice be dwarfed in my situation. Won't let his voice be silent. If God says it, I'll articulate the same thing. I'll echo the heart of God in this season. Because people need God in this season. We need God in this season. So I want us to just make sure that as we continue to move on as believers, that we, we realize that I've got to walk in love and allow the peace of God. Philippians 4 and 7, which passes all understanding, shall keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Your heart and your mind, the peace that you've been looking for, we need that, but we get it by the Spirit of God, by the power of God. God, I need you. I need you now. Mm. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear, Fear has the ability to torment your mind. See, scientists, what they were actually saying is, is that as fear gets into our head, fear begins to write its own path, begins to rewrite your, the routes in your mind for the data from your frontal cortex to your hippocampus. I don't know what any of that means, but you understand but it begins to rewrite routes in your mind. So now, stuff that used to make you fearful or didn't make you fearful makes you fearful now. Let me give you just an example. So, so we've embraced this place where we may potentially have a new normal. Things will never be the same. The world will never be exactly like it was since this point. But, hey, believer, will you hug your neighbor? Or is your new normal one where you say, ah, we don't do that anymore? Will you shake somebody's hand? <laughs> will you greet them with a holy kiss? Or is it that, nah, I've got to, when this is all over, my mind has been reshaped. My mind has changed. And there's some things I just don't do anymore. Y'all, I'm talking about something that is a very, very real possibility when the spirit of fear begins to shape our mind. When the spirit of fear begins to shape your minds, there'll be some things that you have done be before and had no problem with, but now you'll be like, I'll never do that again. You'll never what? Oh, no, I'm never hugging nobody outside of my house. Oh, no, I'm never riding in the car with somebody on a long trip because I don't know what they have and I might catch it. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I, I will never, never go to the grocery store and not have at least a 16-pack of toilet paper, which I am amazed at how fast it can go. Or I will never, never be in a place where, where I look up and I try uh, to, to find myself without a can of Lysol or Clorox wipes or, or those type of things. I, I'll never See, what happens is that if we allow the spirit of fear to shape us too much, what happens is that the spirit of fear will shape you into being, uh, changing your life in ways and dimensions that God did not intend. See, this move, this, this happening, this thing that has happened to us, feel like Paul, has, further, has fallen out rather for the furtherance of the gospel, for love to really be shown, for love to be appreciated. See, one of the things that's happening as I watched the news the other day, I was, I was amazed because one of the guys that was on the news said, he was like, 
uh, they showed a guy who had a uh, business, his business, uh, I forgot what kind of business it was, but he, it was signs. I think he did signs. And so he had one of the cranes on the back of a truck that had the box on it that they lift people up in. And he went to go see his mother. Hadn't seen his mother a whole lot, but that day he decided, I got to see my mom. And he got in the back of his own truck, lift up the back of the thing with the arm, and his mom was on the third floor. He went right to her window and just talked to her for about 20 minutes outside of her window. Why? Because the intention is to make sure that love is now felt in dimensions that it hasn't been felt before. Because what we're finding is we're finding that there's some things that we've lost its value. We've, we've not been in touch with things that really have value. And God says, now in this season, you're going to put some things back in alignment. Your priorities are going to be straight again. You're going to have things back in a place where you realize what really matters in your life. And so as we look at these things, as we go through this life, as we go through this, this time, this season, believers, don't allow your love to get stale. If you fear, if you feel fearful, if you feel like your anxiety is growing, then do us all a favor. Find the love of God. Oh, the love of God has got a way of ruling our hearts and our minds in a way that we can get through stuff we've never imagined. Some of us will experience some hard things. I've already experienced and, and already have had somebody who has been at least close to my family on my wife's side who passed away. And so hard to imagine people passing away during this time because loved ones can't go to the hospital and see because they don't want anybody in the hospital. It's hard to, to see somebody during this time and season in a hospital by themselves, transitioning without anybody by their bedside. And then you have a funeral, and you can't have but 10 people at the funeral. What do you do when the whole family, you can't, you, you, you're making a decision, trying to figure out, well, who can come? Nobody can share, show their love or their respects or honor. It's a hard season. But in this hard season, we have to do what counts. We must allow God's love to rule our hearts, rule our minds. God's love must be there. Amen. Let's pray together, if you don't mind. Father, we thank you so much for loving us. Now, God, teach us to operate in the same love that you have for us. Cause fear and anxiety not to weigh us down. But, God, you have not given us the spirit of fear but one of power, love, and a sound mind. That's the spirit you've given us, power, love, and a sound mind. So teach us, Lord, this day how to operate in that love so that fear can be cast out. Thank you so much, God, for what you're doing in our lives. And we declare that as we live this loving life, that, God, you will be glorified. We thank you for the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today in worship. We pray that you were blessed. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is a decision that you need to make today. Let me tell you, with so many things going on in our world today, what we really need is we need change from the inside out. We need a peace that surpasses all of our understanding and guards our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So we invite you today to just give God your heart. Make him Lord of your life. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, then you can be saved. So I invite you to please join us with this simple prayer. Dear Father, we love you so much. We ask that you would come into our heart, change us. We crown you as Lord of our life, 
and we ask that you would lead us and guide us. We confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that you have come to save us, born from a Virgin Mary, and now has come to give us life eternal. And we love you so much in Jesus' name. Hey, look, it's that easy. The easiest transaction you will ever make in your life is that of salvation. So we pray that you are saved today and share this message with someone else that you love. God bless you.